Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dating After Divorce podcast. I am your host, Shadi Curry. Um, it is a pleasure to be with you this Wednesday morning. Um, so this is going to be a short episode. Um, I just wanted to really introduce a topic that I go over with my, uh, with my clients. This is something that comes up a lot. And when I first became a dating coach, gosh, you're talking like 2019 is when I shifted from being um, a divorce coach, a divorce recovery coach to being a dating coach. Um, I still do a lot of divorce recovery work, but I do it more in the context of uh, divorced women who are dating now. But I started out as a coach, um, just working with women who were recovering emotionally from their divorce and taking them through the path that I had taken to recovery that had uh, really accelerated my journey. And then as they recovered, they started asking about dating and when to do it and how to do it and all the things that come up <laughs> around dating, which I'm sure if you're listening to this, you're very aware of. Um, so this is a topic, the topic of attraction started to come up back then. Um, and it had never been an issue for me, just instinct, I guess you could say instinctively or intuitively. I was very aware of what attraction was. I was aware of how it played out in relationships. Um, so when my clients started having trouble with attraction, um, I, I went back to my psychology book. So I had taken a social psychology class and I knew we had a module in there, in, right there in the textbook that had talked about attraction. And I remember when I read it, I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting. Um, so when my clients started needed me to break down chemistry and attraction or when they started bringing scenarios to me like, well, I just wasn't attracted to him. Um, I wasn't attracted to his profile. I wasn't attracted to his picture. I was kind of confused because um, often they didn't know what they were attracted to. They were, if I said, oh, well, why weren't you attracted to him? Like they would be like, oh, I don't know. Um, when I was dating, I was pretty open uh, when it came to physical attraction. Um, I My instincts were a person's physical appearance um, can be deceiving. Just like, and it, probably because I had just dated so many super handsome guys in college. I had dated, oh my God, I dated a couple of guys that were just phenomenally physically attractive. Awesome super hot guys. Um, and I had learned, I guess, through those experiences that physical attraction was only one element of, um, of the equation. And I had kind of taken that in, um, at, at, at a certain point when I was in college, I did swing the other way where I was like, Oh, physical attraction does not matter at all. And I did it some guys who were not attractive and that didn't work out either. Um, so over time, especially after the divorce, I think my brain had just sort of shifted to like the perfect balance in the middle. And so when I was talking to my clients, I just, they didn't know what was happening with them. So I had to break down attraction for them in the process. Um, what I found is that often women don't know what they're attracted to. They just assume that if they don't feel a spark, that that person is not for them. And I would like to say that you need to understand what your specific spark is comprised of so that you know if it's just your brain trying to latch on to an avoidant person because um, a person's scarcity will uh, spark attraction in you. If a person is emotionally unavailable, emotionally avoidant, or excessively charming, it will spark attraction because of the elements of attraction. So going back to uh, my book, so I had taken this social psychology class when this started coming up uh, way back, 2019-ish with my clients, I was like, I should probably go back and see what they said in the textbook. And in psychology, they have uh, five elements of interpersonal attraction. And you can find this online or in any um, academic journals or any uh, social psychology textbook. So the elements of interpersonal attraction are proximity, which is how close, how near you are with the person. Familiarity, that means how often you interact with the person plays into attraction. Similarity, how much you are compatible with that person 
are not compatible physically, but in your values. So your core values, your core interests, your personalities, how similar are you in the way you see the world? This is what people refer to as being on the same wavelength. You, you know, you have these inside jokes and things like that. Um, physical attractiveness. So yes, the person's physical attractiveness to you, not to the world, not necessarily while they look like a celebrity and everyone approves of their attractiveness, which is another stumbling block with my clients, their physical attractiveness to you matters. Their reciprocity of interest, reciprocity of kindness, reciprocity of consideration, and then also scarcity, the feeling that they are valuable. And um, our brains always feel like uh, things that are out of reach are valuable, are more valuable. And then also their responsiveness, how much attention they pay to you, how available they make themselves to you. Um, depending on the textbook you read or the article you read, there are multiple overlaps of some of these, um, of some of these elements, but I want to break down a couple that could be tripping you up. One is proximity. So the idea behind proximity is if you put um, two people of the right gender. So depending on your orientation, a man and a woman in this case, uh, because that's the bulk of my practice, I will just talk about, uh, heterosexual relationships. If you put a man and a woman on an Island by themselves <laughs> in the same proximity, interacting with each other at some point, they will be attracted to, to each other and biology will take its course. And this is one of the reasons why so many of us ended up in relationships that were not healthy for us because we kept dating the wrong guy. We kept staying with the wrong guy. And over time, our proximity to the wrong guy and your familiarity with the wrong guy sparked attraction. So it, the, the elements of attraction work both to create attraction with the right person and they can also create attraction with the wrong person. And so when you are thinking that you don't feel the spark, that's not enough to make a decision. When I work with my clients, I always say, Hey, let's sit on this. What is the spark? When have you felt it before? Often you felt the spark with your abusive ex. So let's not just take the spark at face value, right? Secondly, what elements were present when you felt the spark? Like, were you looking at the profile? All right. You were looking at the profile technically can't really feel a spark for a one dimensional, um, document or looking at your phone. Now, of course, if you're looking at the person's physical attractiveness alone, you might feel a spark, but you need to know that that spark is based just on physical attractiveness and all the other elements of attraction are not present. Now, those other elements of attraction, it's sort of like if you, uh, think of, um, a gauge, uh, if you sort of picture, you know, a soundboard and, uh, that the sound engineers who support musicians use, they're like a whole array of knobs and they move some of them up and down, up and down. And then to get the right balance, what you're looking for in attraction is the right balance. You're not looking for everything to be a nine. You're looking for the right combination of things to create the spark. Yes. The spark needs to be there, but to be a sustainable spark, not just an intense spark. You want the spark to be sustainable over the course of your long-term relationship. So all of these things have to come into play. Most of them you cannot evaluate based on a profile. So this is something I've worked with my clients in. And then secondly, you will have your own unique combination of all of these elements that will create attraction. Um, I, I was working with a client and we worked a lot on her attraction because uh, just her situation and what she'd been through and all of those things, her, you could say her attraction dial was out of whack. And so we did a lot of work over many months while she was dating with every date, we would evaluate what was happening with her attraction. And by the end of um, our work together, she knew exactly what she was attract attracted to, what was healthy, what wasn't healthy, what the right balance was. And the reason I bring her up was because there was one, um, gentleman that she dated for several weeks. And she said, you know, I didn't, we felt more like friends for a while, but I was super comfortable with him. I was able to talk about anything with him, which in that case, she, you know, that is talking about that reciprocal, att um, attention, um, 
you can be yourself with the person. There's like this mutual openness where you feel like you wouldn't be judged. So they had that part of it. He was somewhat physically attractive to her, but he wasn't like her nine guy. But she said, as we interacted, I saw how he interacted with other people. And he was so kind and so attentive. And he just made a difference in so many people's lives that she remembered the day they were out. And I think they were out with a group of people and there was a situation and he responded to that person with just so much kindness that she like in that moment felt a surge of physical attraction. Like she feels like I was so attracted to him in that moment. And that is the overlap of similarity, which is their, her, her value for kindness and giving back and treating people well in the world. She saw that element in him. It, and you could say in full bloom in that moment. And it sparked so much attraction in her. So attraction is not a one and done. It is a, it's a journey. It's a learning process. If you've been with your, if you were with your ex for a really long time, um, you might, uh, or if, if like many of my clients, he was the first person you were with and you didn't really date a lot before getting married, you might not know what you're attracted to. You might actually not know what the specific combination of all of these things looks like for you. What I encourage you to do is to start to explore that, start to evaluate attraction when you are out with your, uh, on your dates, right? Is there physical attraction? You want, if there is, you check the box. If there isn't, okay, it's maybe it's a three, maybe it's a four, but that doesn't mean you throw the person out the window <laughs> just because there's no spark. There's no attraction. You can be attracted to someone who's not good for you on a first date. You cannot be attracted to someone who is good for you on a first date. Like there's so many factors that come into play you can, you might not be able to make um, the decision right off the bat. Now, if you are practiced and have a full understanding of your elements of attraction, then by all means, you know exactly what to do. But you want to check for the physical attraction. You want to check for um, your mutual, your core values and how they overlap, if they overlap. Similarity in how you see the world. Um, reciprocity is this person reciprocating interest with you are they personable like do you enjoy being with them do they feel comfortable to you right do they feel safe are you able to be vulnerable um, all of these things come into play in a unique combination and there's also one now this was not um a part of the discussion in the psychology class and my assumption is that i guess maybe psychologists think of this as part of similarity but i have found that intellectual Attraction is important. Um, it is part of being on the same wavelength, but for my highly intelligent women who are into personal development, who are into a growth mindset, who want to make a big contribution in the world, I found that that intellectual attraction, that intellectual similarity, that intellectual reciprocity is very important to them. So you might actually have some other elements that aren't in this list. You might have some other elements that aren't in the textbooks. We, we humans are not, we can't, there's no formula. We are very individual. We are very unique. So understanding yourself in this process is very, very, um, is very, very important. Um, I have some of my clients who are just like, I want to be par part of a power couple. Like this person has to come forward with the energy to create something big in the world. And that is what sparks attraction for them. So what, what sparks attraction for you? Have you ever sat down to think about it? Do you have that as part of your ideal partner list? This is work that I do with my clients. We do it as part of the irresistible you worksheet. We do it as part of their ideal partner, um, uh, deep dive. We also do it as we evaluate every single date together. I joke with my clients when they tell me about, because they tend to default to the physical attraction. Like I just not attracted to him and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, I will never make you marry someone that you are not attracted to. I will never, I, I couldn't make you marry anyone. Anyway, that's, that's not a thing. It's not a thing we do in coaching, right? I am a mentor and I'm a guide. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, your parent. And so, I said, I'm not telling you to marry someone who's ugly. I will never, ever ask you to marry someone who is like not right for you. All I'm encouraging is that you figure out the knobs on the dial. So there might be some trial and error and there might be some figuring out and there might be some 
Sometimes you swing just a little bit to the left and we swing just a little bit to the right just to know where your specific boundaries are. So that's always a funny moment in my coaching sessions when they they look at me with their eyes get big like, what are you saying? Are you saying I should date this guy who looks terrible? I'm like, no, never. Not saying that. We're just exploring. All right. So that is sort of an introduction to um, chemistry and attraction, romantic chemistry, romantic attraction. Um, I hope that was useful for you. This is a very important topic. It play, it could play into a lot of the reasons why you might be having trouble with um, your dating journey. So I want to invite you to schedule a consultation call with me today. If you go to the show notes, you will find the link to schedule a consultation call, or you can just go to shadecurry.com and click on schedule appointment and you will be able within like a minute, just put in your name, the date that you want, and just fill in a few prompts with a couple of sentences, and you will be well on your way to exploring this with me and getting some guidance on your dating journey. All right, thank you for your time and attention, and I will see you next time.